Good morning, friends. This is Josh, and uh, I just wanted to go through a few announcements before we start with church today. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, our food pantry down in Great Valley. This past week, we served 100 people uh, that came through, and we are uh, still in need of food donations and monetary donations. So if you're able to help out uh, in this time of need, we would really ask uh, for your support uh, right now. Uh, we are serving about twice as many people, if not more, than we normally do. Um, so it's, it's a time that we're running through a lot of food, and uh, we need a lot of resources uh, to keep that up. So if you can help, please let us know. Also, I just wanted to, uh, again, remind you about how you can continue your giving to the church if you are able to. If you are unemployed or uh, lost your job or temporarily laid off right now, please do not continue giving to the church. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Uh, but if you would like to continue to support the church during this time, there are a couple ways you can do that. The first way is to mail a check to P.O. Box 656 in Ellicottville, New York, 14731. Um, that would probably be the easiest and best way for you uh, to continue giving to the church. Another way is on our website, stpaulsellicottville.com. Click on the online giving tab and you'll be prompted through how to give online. Uh, but please note that 3% of anything that you give online does get taken away in a service fee. The final way you can do it is to contact your bank and uh, have them set up payments to the church and they will help you through that process, uh, whichever financial institution that you have. Finally, I just wanted to say if you need anything at all uh, from any of us here, please feel free to contact us here at the church. Uh, you can call the phone number. The, the, the phone is being forwarded to Glenda, so uh, she'll be able to answer you still, or you can contact either Pastor Dan or myself, and we'll help you out in any way that you can, in any way that we can. Also, uh, on our Facebook page, we're posting almost daily, so make sure you head on over to our Facebook page and uh, see all the videos and fun stuff that we're putting out over there as well. So now let's get started with worship. We begin our service today with the call to worship. The prophet asks, can our soul-weary bones live again? Oh God, you know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning, loss, and grief? Oh God, you know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. God's breath poured out as new life for weary souls. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life and worship God in joy and anticipation. We pray. Compassionate God, the wind of your spirit is the very sign of life for all who long for you. One breath from you and we are rescued from the arid valley of dry bones, given muscles and sinews and joy with which to praise you, and filled with the holy hope you grant for all your faithful children. Let our whole lives be filled with the life breath of the Spirit, and what has lain dormant may burst into bloom, and what looks to us to be death may re be revealed as but sleep before the emergence of new life. Amen. First reading comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. And I 
and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of God Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. Ella and Abby, thank you so much for sharing your gifts and abilities with us. It's nice to see a different face and a different voice uh, when we miss seeing each other so much on these Sunday mornings. So thank you for doing those readings for us. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he, who, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. 
Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and his feet were bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Family, the last couple of weeks have seemed like a whole crazy year, haven't they? Our church is closed, our schools are shut down, our businesses are boarded up, our headlines are hair-raising. It's like nothing any of us has ever even imagined. Now, in normal times, we gather in our sanctuary on Sunday mornings to hear God's word, to worship, and to get our batteries recharged. Then we leave this holy place, ready to go out into the world as God's hands and feet, and to spread God's love and hope and peace and forgiveness and compassion. But that's not something we can do right now. Some of us may join the Facebook watch party and worship at the same time, but we're still physically distant from each other. And we do that distancing as an act of caring for our neighbors. It's an act of love. But even though we can't gather together in the St. Paul's sanctuary, we still gather as the church. We have to remember that the church isn't a building. We are the church. A building can't be the hands and feet of God. A building can't share the word, God's word of grace and peace and love. A building can't feed the hungry, tend to the ill, or comfort the prisoner, but the church can, and family, we are the church. So what do our readings today have to tell us about how to be the church during the trials of a pandemic? In our Old Testament lesson, God takes Ezekiel out to a valley full of dry bones and asks him, mortal, how can these bones live? And Ezekiel answered, O Lord God, you know. If Ezekiel was going to know whether a pile of dry old bones could live, he needed a word from God. In our gospel reading, Jesus' very good friend, Lazarus, whom he loved, had died. Not only that, but Jesus delayed coming to the house of Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha, to make sure that Lazarus was good and dead. Four days after his death, he waited. And when he finally arrives, he encounters his own valley of dry bones. Grief and sorrow and pain and tears. 
And as he approaches the house, Martha runs out to greet him and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even know, even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. The thing is, Martha knew that Jesus could have healed her brother. In fact, they were such good friends that she probably expected that very thing to happen. So what gives? Why is Lazarus dead? Martha needs a word from God. And now here we are. And it seems as though we've been led out into our own valley of dry bones. And we wait. So what gives? Why are we going through all of these things? When is it going to end? You might be asking yourself, Pastor, you say over and over and over again how much God loves us. So why is this happening? Like Ezekiel and Martha before us, we desperately need a word from God. And family, the bad news is that I can't answer any of those questions for you today. And to be perfectly honest, a clear word from God is something that might be a while in coming. The good news for us this morning is that Jesus, uh, or that God did have a word for Ezekiel and for Martha. And those answers that God gave them were very similar and I believe very helpful to us in our situation. In Ezekiel, the answer sounded like this. God told Ezekiel to speak to the bones and say, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus, said the Lord, thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel spoke as God had commanded and suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God told Ezekiel to speak to the breath and say, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And he spoke as he was, as, as he was commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived. So in Ezekiel, God's word was that God has power over life and death. God's word is that God can bring life even into the middle of a valley of dry, old bones. And what was that word that God gave to Martha? Well, Jesus sent Martha to get her sister Mary, and they all shared a tear, even Jesus. Jesus knew that things were going to be okay. He knew that Lazarus was going to be resurrected, but he also understood the pain and sadness of grief and loss, the pain of being in a valley of dry bones. So Jesus wept with his friends. Then he asked them to show them where the tomb was, and they took him to it, and Jesus told them to open the tomb. But Martha didn't like that idea. She said, Jesus, that's a bad idea. He's been dead for four days, and the stench will be overwhelming. This is one of those few times that I really love the old King James translation when Jesus says, roll the stone away, and Martha just says, but Lord, he stinketh. The rest of the story goes like this. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, 
his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. So for Mary and Martha, God's word, again, was that God has power over life and death, that God could bring life even to a tomb, even to a man who had been dead for four days. Interestingly, by coming back to Bethany and raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus was signing his own death warrant. The wealthy and powerful in Israel already had issues with him, but this, this resurrection, was a step too far. So as word began to spread by, be spread by the witnesses of that resurrection of Lazarus, something had to be done with Jesus because people would begin to follow him. People would begin to call for him to be king. And the rich and powerful don't put up with anyone who threatens their wealth and power. So just a couple of weeks later, they arrested Jesus. They convicted him of treason and killed him by hanging him on a cross. And his fearful followers locked themselves in a small room and wondered how they would ever find their way through this deep, dark, hopeless valley of dry bones. They were in desperate need of a word from God. And one more time, God's word was that God has power over life and death. That God could bring life even into a world that had murdered God's own son. So family, I'm the first one to admit that there are a lot of answers that I do not have today. I don't know what's going to come of all this. I can't promise you that you are going to come through this thing unscathed, that you will be okay physically through all of it. I don't know when it's going to be over. I don't know when we're going to be able to gather together again and to greet each other with a warm embrace. But here's what I do know. Throughout history, the creator of the universe has been shown to have power over life and death. And I know that God loves me and watches over me and provides for me. I know that I am made in God's own image and I know that God is well pleased with me. And I know that any time I have to walk through a valley of dry bones or the valley of the shadow of death, that God is with me. And that goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And if you're saying to yourself, well, that's great for you, Pastor, but what about the rest of us? I'm happy to tell you that I know that the very same God of the universe loves you and watches over you and provides for you. I know that each one of you is made in God's own image. I know that God is well pleased with you and loves you unconditionally. And I know that whether you are walking through a valley of dry bones or the valley of the shadow of death, that God is with you. And that goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and that you will live in the house of the Lord forever, for an eternity. I don't have all the answers, family. I don't even have that many answers. But for me, these answers are enough to get me through this or any other trial. And I pray that it is for you as well. Amen. Then we take a moment to come before God with a prayer of confession and a time for forgiveness. We pray. Revitalizing God, your power goes far beyond our own. 
and yet we still act as though the pains of the world have final claim upon us. We give in to the despair and the hopelessness of death, not trusting in your ability to call forth new life from the tombs of our lives. Forgive us for doubting your power, your power to raise up new life in the midst of all the death we experience. Forgive us for wanting to limit you to the last day or the world beyond this one, not trusting you to move and act among us, within us, and through us. Forgive us and open our eyes to the wonder of new life sprouting into being in our very midst. We take a few moments for silent reflection and meditation, a time for you to lift up your own confession to our Heavenly Father. Family, Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, please join me in a moment of silence to reflect on those things in your life that feel lifeless. Share them with God. And imagine your dreams and your hopes starting to breathe, like the bones that Ezekiel described. Imagine your dreams and hopes starting to breathe and coming to life as new possibilities. God, our hope is in you. Breathe on us and our world as you blew your breath into those bones of old. Bring life into our weariness and joy into our despair breath of life, hear our prayer. We pray for those living with only the bare bones of resources, for those with no fresh water, for those who have lost their land and their livelihood. We pray for those who feel that the life has gone out of their relationships, for those feeling friendless, for those who have lost loved ones, especially the families of victims of violence. Breath of life, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are tempted to despair, for the people of lands in strife, for the refugee with nowhere to sleep, for the hungry with no food to eat. Breath of life, hear our prayer. God of hope, draw close to us. Bless us with the promise of hope that no despair can overcome. Raise us from the tombs of our past mistakes into the light of new possibilities. Breathe life into our weakness and bless us with fresh strength. Breath of life, hear our prayer. God of life, breathe on us now, confirming your presence within us, empowering us to go forth as your people, spreading your hope into this world. Use us to help others and bring us all to a place of hope and the fullness of life. Breath of life, hear our prayer. O oh, breath of life, hear these prayers that we've both spoken aloud and whispered in the quietness of our hearts. We commend all of these petitions to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he look upon you with favor and be gracious to you. The Lord, turn his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and family, I hope that you will hang around for a few extra minutes. We're going to just spend some time. If you're in the watch party, um, we're going to spend a few times just chatting back and forth 
uh, through text messaging. So hope you're able to stay for that. Um, love you. Have a wonderful week.